Welcome back, everybody. Today, we are going on an incredible journey into the future of space exploration. We're talking moon bases, mm -hmm. lunar construction, and wait for it, bricks made from moon dust. Yeah, it's pretty mind-blowing. China's really taking the lead here. They're looking to set up a permanent spot on the moon, and they're coming up with some very creative ways to build it. That's right. And it's not exactly like we could just, you know, pack up a bunch of building supplies and ship them all the way to the yeah. moon. So what are they thinking? Well, they're focusing on using what's already there, lunar soil. I know it might sound like something straight out of science fiction, but researchers are actually figuring out ways to turn this dust and rock into legit building materials. Okay, so like actual bricks. How do they do that? Well, there are a couple ways they're testing out. One of them uses a technique called microwave sintering, where they basically use microwaves to heat and fuse the lunar soil into a solid material. So instead of like, I don't know, giant brick ovens on the moon, we're talking like some super high powered microwaves. Exactly. And get this, research has shown that there's a mineral found in abundance on the moon called ilmenite, and it can actually make this whole microwave process way more efficient. Oh, that's pretty cool. So we've got microwave moon bricks. What else are they considering? China's got these prototype bricks made from materials that mimic lunar soil. And they're testing them out on the Tiangong space station, putting them through the ringer. They're exposing them to that crazy lunar environment to see how they hold up. Yeah, that lunar environment is brutal, right? Extreme temperatures, radiation, micrometeoroids, even moonquakes. So these bricks have got to be seriously tough to survive all of that. Well, they are. Early tests have shown they're actually three times stronger than your standard brick. Plus, get this, they interlock. You don't even need any mortar or a binding agent. Wow. So it's kind of like lunar Legos. Oh. Snapping together to build a moon base. You got it. Yeah, that's really cool. But um, how do you actually build something with them on the moon? Well, China's developing a robot called the Lunar Spider, specifically for this purpose. It's going to be able to 3D print structures directly on the moon using lunar soil. A 3D printing spider robot on the moon. Now we're talking. It sounds like something right out of a movie. It does, doesn't it? Speaking of movies... The European Space Agency is also doing some really interesting research. They're 3D printing what they call space bricks using simulated lunar regolith. Wait, hold on. Simulated moon dust. Where do they get that? They actually create it using meteorite dust, which is essentially the same stuff you find on the moon. So they're basically bringing a piece of the moon to Earth to do these experiments. That's pretty clever. What's the big advantage of using these 3D printed space bricks? Well, first off, they can test out different designs and building techniques before they even go to the moon. And this whole modular thing, it gives them a ton of flexibility in what they can actually build. So we could potentially see some really unique, maybe even kind of wild looking structures on the moon, not just, you know, your typical boxy buildings. Exactly. And it all points to a really big change in how we're thinking about space exploration. We're shifting towards using local resources, trying to create a more sustainable presence beyond Earth. Yeah, this is definitely starting to sound less like science fiction and more like, you know, just science fact. But beyond bricks, what other challenges are there to building on the moon? What about things like energy or life support? That's a great question. And you know what? It turns out that lunar regolith might be the answer to some of those challenges. Researchers at the University of Waterloo are actually exploring its potential for things like life support systems, energy generation, even more building materials. Wait, hold on a second. You're telling me moon dust can power a base. That's wild. How does that even work? It's pretty fascinating. There's this process called a thermite reaction. Basically, it involves using the metallic dust inside lunar regolith and its oxygen content to create a controlled chemical reaction. This reaction generates a ton of heat and energy. So they're harnessing the power of moon dust to keep the lights on. Now that is resourceful. Definitely innovative. And there's even talk of using defunct satellites as fuel for these reactions. It's a way to tackle that whole space junk problem while also creating a more sustainable lunar ecosystem. Okay, so we've gone from moon dust bricks to moon powered bases, and now we're recycling satellites. Mm -hmm. This is blowing my mind. It feels like we're really on the verge of something incredible here. We are. And what's even more exciting is that China's lunar plans go beyond just building a base for themselves. They've got this vision for the International Lunar Research Station. It's a joint project with Russia, and it's open to other countries and organizations. So we're talking about a global effort to establish a permanent human presence on the moon. Mm -hmm. It really does feel like we're entering a new era of space exploration. It does. And it all starts with that seemingly ordinary lunar soil. It makes you think, what other amazing uses for moon dust are we going to uncover in the years to come? 
That's the beauty of science and exploration. There's always something new to learn, especially when you're dealing with a place as mysterious and unexplored as the moon. Yeah, it really makes you think about how ingenious and resourceful people have to be to make space exploration happen. We're talking about taking this, well, seemingly empty landscape and turning it into a place where humans could actually live. It's like frontier living, but on the moon. And speaking of habitats, I'm kind of curious, what do you think these lunar structures are going to look like? Will it just be like, you know, all rigid, blocky buildings? Or could we see something a bit more uh, out there? Well, that's where things start to get really exciting. With 3D printing and all the advancements in material science, we're not stuck with those old school ways of building anymore. So you're saying we could see some pretty wild designs. Oh, absolutely. Imagine structures that practically blend in with the lunar landscape, mm -hmm. maybe even mimicking some of the natural formations. Mm -hmm. Or we might even see inflatable habitats that can be deployed and expanded super quickly. Whoa, inflatable moon homes. Now that's a concept I'd love to see in action. It's amazing how we're taking these architectural ideas from Earth and adapting them to this completely alien environment. But beyond just how it looks, what are some of the technical challenges of building on the moon? Well, one thing that comes to mind is lunar dust itself. It hasn't gone through the same kind of weathering and erosion as Earth soil. So it, its properties, you know, how it sticks together could be totally different. So that could be a problem for this whole moon dust brick thing. It's something to consider for sure. But researchers are already looking into ways to, like, mimic that weathering process, maybe even using 3D printing to create bricks that have a more Earth-like structure. It's all about coming up with creative solutions. And speaking of creative solutions, we talked earlier about that lunar spider robot. Any updates on that? It's still in development, but it's definitely a huge step forward for lunar construction. Basically, yeah. it's a semi-autonomous robot designed to well, handle all the heavy lifting of putting structures together on the moon. So like a robotic construction crew. No complaints about coffee breaks, I bet. But seriously, with all this amazing technology, it makes you wonder, will we even need astronauts on the moon if robots can do all the building? That's a great question, and it's one that a lot of people are discussing. Automation is going to be super important, but there's a good chance humans will always be essential, at least for the foreseeable future. So it'll be more of a team effort, humans and robots working together. Exactly. Astronauts bring their expertise, their ability to adapt, and their problem-solving skills, while the robots can handle the repetitive or dangerous stuff. It's about finding that right balance. And it makes you realize that building a moon base isn't just about you know, the technical stuff. It's about pushing the limits of what humans can do. It's a testament to what we can achieve when we really set our minds to it. I totally agree. And it's not just about what we build, but how we build it. You know, we touched on using local resources, but there's also the whole question of sustainability. Right. We can't just go to the moon and repeat all the unsustainable things we've done here on Earth. Absolutely. We have to think long term about the ecological impact. That means developing closed loop systems that minimize waste, recycle resources, and maybe even figure out how to grow food on the moon. So we're talking about creating a self-sustaining lunar ecosystem. It's a big dream, but it's starting to become a real possibility. And it's not just about minimizing our footprint. It's about learning how to live in harmony with this new environment. We have a responsibility to treat the moon with respect, not just as something to be exploited. Couldn't agree more. It's a whole new way of thinking, recognizing that we're not just visitors, but potential caretakers of this celestial body. It makes you think about the kind of legacy we want to leave on the moon. Will it be a legacy of progress and collaboration, or will we just repeat the mistakes of the past? That is a profound question, and one we really need to think about carefully as we move forward. But you know what? I'm optimistic. I think we have the potential to create something truly special on the moon, something that benefits everyone. It is an inspiring thought. But with all this talk of sustainability and working together, there's one thing that keeps popping into my head. Building on the moon is going to take a ton of resources and money. So how do we make sure that this effort actually benefits everyone, not just a select few? It's a huge question for sure. I mean, how do we guarantee that this whole incredible endeavor building a base on the moon doesn't just become, you know, some kind of vanity project for the wealthy countries or powerful nations? It really comes down to, considering the ethical side of space exploration, we need to be absolutely sure that the benefits, whether it's new scientific knowledge, technological advancements, or even just the inspiration it brings, are shared fairly among everyone. So it's bigger than just building a base, right? It's about building a future that's more just and inclusive for everybody 
here on Earth and in space. Exactly. And that starts with promoting international cooperation and transparency. We have to get away from this idea of a space race and move toward a more collaborative approach, one where every nation has a voice. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, but cooperation can be tough, you know, especially when you have different countries with different goals and priorities. How do we even begin to deal with all that complexity? It's definitely a challenge, but I think the International Lunar Research Station is a good example of how to head in the right direction. By getting multiple countries and organizations involved right from the start, we can create a system for shared decision-making and governance. So it's like a set of rules or guidelines for how we all operate on the moon. Exactly. Some people have even talked about the need for a lunar constitution, a document that outlines the basic principles for peaceful cooperation, environmental protection, and the fair sharing of resources. Oh, a lunar constitution. That's a pretty radical idea. Yeah. It really does highlight how we're not just building a base, we're essentially creating a whole new society on the moon. And like with any new society, we have a responsibility to learn from our past, to try and avoid making the same mistakes we made here on Earth. We have this amazing chance to create something truly special on the moon, a model for how humans can live together peacefully and sustainably, not just with each other, but with this completely new environment. It's pretty inspiring when you think about all the possibilities, not just for science and technology, but for culture and art, too. Imagine what kind of creativity could flourish in this new lunar frontier. It's fascinating to think about. Lunar art installations, music composed under the glow of the Earth, stories inspired by the vastness of space. The human spirit is capable of such incredible things when we push past what we think are our limits. It makes you wonder what Mark will ultimately leave on the moon. Will it be one of progress, cooperation, and inspiration? Or one that just reflects all the conflicts and division we see here on Earth? That's a question for the generations that come after us. But I truly believe that if we embrace sustainability, inclusivity, and peaceful collaboration, we can create a legacy on the moon that benefits all of humanity for a very long time. It's a vision worth working towards for sure. And it all starts with these first steps, these innovative solutions, these lunar bricks made from moon dust. It's amazing to think that something as seemingly ordinary as lunar soil could unlock a future we can only dream of right now. Well, as we wrap up this deep dive, I'm definitely left with a sense of awe and excitement for what the future holds. Building a moon base is a massive challenge, but it's also an incredible opportunity to push the boundaries of human ingenuity and create something truly remarkable. And who knows, maybe some of you listening will be among the pioneers building and living on the moon someday, shaping this new chapter in human history. So keep looking up at the night sky, keep dreaming big, and never stop exploring the possibilities. After all, the sky's not the limit when there are footprints on the moon.